Closed captioning for deer and wildlife stories is brought to you by Beam Fence Company. Check them out at beamfence.com. This program is dedicated to the brave men and women of the United States Armed Forces, past, present, and future. I'm Keith Warren. I'm a hunter. What do you think of that? Look at that. Woo! A fisherman. Two fish on at one time? Oh my gosh! A conservationist. Hey, let go of that nipple. You're done. You're finished. A family man. Life is good. I love you, baby. Love you too. And I'm proud to be a deer farmer. I'm taking a road trip. And we're going behind the scenes of today's most innovative deer farmers and wildlife management operations in North America. This is Deer and Wildlife Stories. The topic on today's show is CWD, or chronic wasting disease, and any deer or elk enthusiast really has probably heard about this disease. Well, about a year ago, we did a video on CWD, and it's playing on our YouTube channel, and we discovered a lot of good information about it. We also discovered that it appears to be a political disease. Well, over the last 12 months, so much has happened on the CWD front. It's popped up in the areas that's never had it before. It's re-popped up in areas that they thought it was gone from. And uh, today's show, we're going to dive right into CWD, find out what's going on today. We're going to start out by telling you what CWD is and what causes it. Chronic wasting disease is caused by a protein known as a prion. And prions are normal cellular proteins. We all have prions. Humans have prions. Deer have prions. Elk have prions. When the prion takes on an abnormal shape, then it accumulates in tissues. And this accumulation of the abnormal prions is associated with the disease, chronic wasting disease. CWD only affects certain species of cervidae, i.e. cervids are deer in a general class, so it affects white tails, mule deer, elk, red deer, moose, and black tail deer. It does not affect any of the other deer species that we know of. It does not affect other livestock species, and the Center for Disease Control says it does not affect man. Another question is, does deer density cause CWD? No, I, I wouldn't say that CWD is, is caused by or driven by an overpopulation of animals. Certainly the parts of the state of Wyoming where we see the highest prevalence in mule deer, mule deer populations are actually declining and actually in some trouble and the prevalence continues to rise in those populations. So we haven't demonstrated yet a direct density dependent effect of this disease. Does deer density cause it? That's a good question. And I think it probably doesn't cause it, but it certainly probably contributes to how fast this disease spreads from animal to animal. There have been concern from some agencies that because of density of animals on cervid farms that this leads to an increase in population of CWD that is found in the wild. This is not correct. There are many areas of the country where there are no cervid farms and those areas are considered endemic for CWD. It is not known how many animals actually have CWD. Different states give different estimates of populations within areas of that particular state. Wisconsin has an area that has reported incidents from one to five to seven percent. And then there's the state of Wyoming where the prevalence rate for chronic wasting disease in one area is as high as 50 percent. That's right, 50 percent, folks. You have to ask yourself, what does a chronic wasting disease infected animal actually look like? So one of the difficult things with chronic wasting disease is that it, it falls into a family of diseases that are known to have a prolonged incubation time, which means they don't show symptoms right away. So these animals can be infected, can have the disease, can therefore spread the disease and shed the disease, and yet not appear ill at all. Once you do see clinical signs, they typically die within one to two months. However, it can be very variable. And so you can see animals that are infected for years, literally, and not show any clinical signs. And that's one of the tricky things with the disease is that we can't tell a live animal if they're sick or not until you get those terminal stages of disease. It just so happens that the clinical signs that an animal has CWD are virtually the same clinical signs that an animal could be sick from EHD, pneumonia, or any number of other animal diseases. Chronic wasting disease is, as we said, chronic. The animals that are affected by this are very thin, they lose weight, 
In other words, you would see the hip bones, the back bones, the ribs sticking out. They are very unsteady. They often have an incredibly poor hair coat. Typically, they lose body condition. They become dull to their surroundings. They may develop pneumonia from inhalation pneumonia, inability to swallow. They salivate a lot, and the eventual course of the disease for these is always fatal. With CWD, there is no group that is more susceptible or anywhere more resistant to the disease. It can affect fawns, young animals, they can contract the prion, adults, bucks, does. There is no group that is more susceptible to it. So it turns out by looking at an animal, you can never really tell if it has CWD or not, whether it looks healthy or whether it looks unhealthy. So the only way to tell for sure if an animal has CWD is to have it tested. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you in part by Bruton Easy Pull Trailers, Deer Guardian Misting Systems, Game Management Software, the North American Deer Farmers Association, Record Rack Deer Feeds, Whitetail Sales and Service, and Newport Labs. CWD requires a laboratory diagnosis. A person can't just look at an animal and consider it to have CWD. To make that proper diagnosis, the correct tissues have to be submitted in a timely manner to a certified laboratory for that diagnosis to be proper. The one thing I really want you to understand is that there is no live CWD test right now, which means in order to test a deer to see a live deer, if it has CWD or not, they need to kill it. And unfortunately, what they're doing is killing thousands upon thousands of perfectly healthy deer to make sure that they're not sick. Does that make any sense at all to you? Kill perfectly healthy deer just to make sure that they're not sick. One thing that needs to be understood and understood very clearly, whenever you hear a report that an animal tested positive for CWD, that animal was tested after it died, not because the animal died from CWD. In these cases, it is animals that were harvested through natural hunting or they were harvested on the deer farm. Those animals tested positive after they died. They were harvested for another reason. They did not die from CWD. Another challenge associated with the current test is again that delayed time of detection of the disease. And even with the lymph nodes and even with the brainstem, we're still not always detecting animals at the really early stages of infection. And so even though an animal tests negative, Really what they've done is failed to detect the prions. It's really not a negative test per se. So now that you know a little bit about CWD, the next logical question would be, where did CWD come from? Its origin is linked back to 1967 in some Colorado State University research facilities where animals were collected from the wild and research done with them. From that point, those animals were dispersed back into the wild where these animals then were diagnosed eventually with chronic wasting disease. All right, so hold on a minute. We know that they brought in perfectly healthy animals that they thought were perfectly healthy now from the wild into their research facility. Now once they did their research on these animals, they released some of those animals back into the wild. And all of a sudden those animals eventually came down with what turns out to be CWD. Wonder what kind of research they were really doing in that facility. Now this research was done back in the 1960s in Colorado. And since then, CWD has been discovered as of the filming of today's show in 23 different states. So the next logical question would be, how did CWD spread? We do know that CWD can be spread directly from animal to animal, either through urine or through feces and also through saliva. There is also very good research to indicate that it can be spread by carrion birds. It can also be incorporated into plant material. So there has been good research that has come out this year that has showed how the CWD prion can be incorporated into alfalfa. So it could be spread from region to region through the hay that is produced in one area and then transported to another area. So how CWD is spread, well we know it can be spread lots of different ways, animal to animal contact and now they're finding it in plant matter, the, the abnormal prions. 
And you have to be thinking about this now. I think we're learning so much about CWD that it's awesome, but at the same time, it can be frightening because when you start thinking about CWD, more than likely is everywhere. And the reason why I'm saying this, just consider this, folks. If it can be in the plant matter, and we know those abnormal prions can be in that plant matter, the deer are going to eat that plant matter, but what happens to that plant matter? An alfalfa field in Colorado or Wyoming or Wisconsin, it doesn't matter. They're harvesting alfalfa hay all the time. And they're taking that hay to different states all over the United States. And they're putting that hay out for animals to eat. When the animals eat it, aren't they exposed to that abnormal prion? Odds are they are. And so you have to think about it. What else is in the hay? More than likely the bugs that are eating the poop that the animals poop in that hay are gonna be in that. And so you start looking at this chain of events that's going on and you realize that the transmission of CWD is bigger than just animal to animal contact. I think man has a whole lot to do with the spread of CWD. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you in part by Beam Fence Company, buckbreeders.com, DNA Solutions and the North American Deer Registry, New Dart, Shock Effect Probiotics, and Keith Warren's Texas Hidden Springs Ranch, the best value for Texas trophy deer hunting. This portion of Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you by Beam Fence Company. Check them out at beamfence.com. It spreads slowly. This isn't a disease that's going to make a 100-mile jump in two weeks. This is a disease that's going to make a 100-mile jump in months or years. Hunters can theoretically contribute to this. So if you kill the deer in an area where the CWD prevalence is high and your deer is positive for this disease and you transport the carcass home 100 miles, 200 miles, 300 miles and you field dress the animal at home or you dump your gut pile at home or you dump the offal at home after you've done your butchering, then you've contaminated a new environment, you know, 100, 200, 300 miles away, and you've made that jump in six hours, whereas the spread of the disease probably takes a lot longer than that. When CWD is found in the wild herd, it's handled differently state by state. Some states may choose to do an eradication program in the area where it's found. Some may choose to do just a monitoring program to see if its distribution continues to spread or some states may just ignore it completely, depending on typically how that particular fish and game or Department of Natural Resources and the local population of hunters feel about the disease at that time. Many times it's not based on good science at all. Different states handle the disease differently. So the first thing we did, we went to the biggest prevalent state that we could, where CWD in some areas is 50%. This is Wyoming, and here's the way they're handling it. Our strategy has always been here in Wyoming to take a kind of a hands-off approach on CWD. We've not undertaken any large-scale depopulations or other measures to try and limit this disease. Other states are trying different approaches and those approaches may or may not work. We're not going to know what's going to work and what's not going to work for many, many years. What works for us may not work for somebody like Wisconsin or Iowa or New York where they're dealing with much higher deer densities. So I caution people not to take our approach and say, well, it works for Wyoming, it ought to work for everybody else. That's not the case. Everybody has different issues, different habitat, different politics. There's no place that's going to be exactly like every other agency on, on how they react. So I wouldn't say that ours is the fit-all plan for the rest of the nation. A hands-off approach. Now, I think that's, uh, that's interesting because in the state of Missouri, it's a hands-on approach, and I'm talking about all hands are on it. CWD was found in northwestern Macon County in north central Missouri. When we found the positives in the Macon County facility, we then in, went back and did some more intensive sampling in the free ranging herd around that facility during that fall and the, and the coming winter and identified those first two free ranging positive animals. In the state of Missouri, we currently have a, a white tailed deer chronic waste and disease surveillance and management plan. So, what we do is we do do hunter harvested surveillance every fall and winter, which a lot of states do. We, it is voluntary in this state. We do have um, what's called our chronic waste and disease containment zone. It's a six county area in the northern part of the state. And that's where we have found all of our chronic waste and disease in both captive and free ranging animals. In addition to hunter harvested surveillance, we also do a spring targeted culling 
removal where we actually go in a very localized area and that's what's really important. We don't, we don't do this in a widespread area. We very localized where we found the disease before and we try to remove as many animals as possible from that area in order to determine the prevalence of the disease and prevent any spread because we know it's there in the wild animals. They're going in and, and targeting these areas and they're trying to eliminate the risk of CWD spreading and how are they doing it? They're, they're killing off the deer. They're killing off all the deer and they're going to continue to kill the deer off this year. Then they're going to evaluate where they are. Okay, so here's something to keep in mind. How is that affecting the landowners? I, I had to ask him. And here's what he said. Local landowners are generally very supportive and have been supportive. I think at the end of the day, most of them are just concerned about the health of the deer herd and willing to do what is necessary to manage that. Really? So I decided, hey, I'm a private landowner and I know lots of private landowners. And I decided we're gonna have a town hall meeting. So we went up to Macon and Lynn County in Missouri and we had a town hall meeting with landowners. And let me tell you something, folks. These people are furious. They're absolutely furious at the Department of Conservation. And the reason why is because the Department of Conservation, in those people's minds, has not been truthful with what the real issues are. Oh, I don't think they're happy. I don't think they're happy that the disease is here. I think they recognize the, the concern with the issue. They're confused about the issue in many situations. But we've not had a great deal of resistance to implementing management action. And so, yeah, they're not happy, no question about it. I think the real issue in this, to be honest with you folks, is it's politics. Uh, why else? Well, there's nothing else that can explain it. The Missouri Department of Conservation is a huge organization that's been overseeing wildlife and conservation in Missouri for many, many years, and they've done a really good job on several fronts. But there's some fronts that they haven't done a good job on. And there are political agendas out there that different people in different states would like to carry forth. And so when all of a sudden you have an issue like CWD, it, it becomes a wedge to drive between sportsmen and between private landowners and public hunters. It becomes a, a wedge to drive between uh, low fence hunting and uh, hunting preserve hunting. It's a wedge. And any wedge divides sportsmen and they become polarized and I don't think that's good. I feel that this disease has become more political and the focus has changed from the true science behind it to the political side of it. And I would encourage everyone to look at the science behind how the disease is actually transmitted. I believe that we've probably overreacted to its effects. We need to understand that it is now what I would consider to be an endemic disease, i.e. it's here, it's here to stay. We will have to learn how to live with it, manage it, and to alleviate the misconceptions about the disease, educate all people involved with this disease, and keep it from becoming a political disease rather than a disease that we are going to have to manage, live with, and take care of. As of the filming of today's show, there are two bills sitting on the governor of Missouri's desk right now for his signature that will transfer the oversight of hunting preserves and deer farms from the Missouri Department of Conservation to the Department of Ag. There are some folks that think that deer farming is spreading CWD. So, should deer farms be shut down? The cervid industry is one of the best regulated industries in agriculture. There is a myth that diseases such as CWD or EHD would have originated in farm deer and then moved to the wild. In all reality, it is just the opposite. These diseases are worldwide. They are not limited to farm deer, and in most cases, these diseases moved from wild deer into our farm deer. The deer farm is one of the highest regulated farms you will ever come across. Every animal that dies on that farm undergoes testing to determine what that animal died from. We know much more about our farm deer and the diseases that they die from than any institution or agency can potentially or possibly know about the animals in the wild. Yeah, I mean, I think we recognize that, that the captive industry has been in Missouri for a long time and we have no desires to, to put the industry out of business. I think we all uh, care about deer and we want to do whatever we can to minimize risk and, and that's really what we're focused on. Whether it's management of the free-ranging herd or it's management of, 
of things that are done inside captive facilities that we can minimize the risk to protect the deer in the state of Missouri, regardless of what side of the fence they're on. The more I learn about chronic wasting disease, the more I have to believe that this is a political issue, that people's jobs are at stake, research money is out there to be had, to be taken. Different departments and state agencies are trying to uh, jockey for position. It just seems political to me. Even the experts say that this is something that likely is going to be spread all over, especially when you start looking at decades down the road. I'm one of the first ones to say that once you have any disease, especially chronic wasting disease, in a free-ranging population, it's going to be very difficult to eradicate for multiple reasons. Again, it's, it's always hard to contain any disease once it gets into a wildlife population. So I think it's going to be an uphill battle. My gut feeling is that over the next 100 years, let's say, that this disease will probably be spread from coast to coast. And so all these efforts that are being done, I think we're learning a lot from it, both good and bad. And so I think that sportsmen need to become more in tune what's going on. They need to, to learn the truth about CWD. And if you'd like to learn more about these interviews that we had with these experts and other experts, we've got a very long video on our YouTube channel. I would encourage anybody wanting to know what these experts had to say at length, go to my YouTube channel and listen to what they said. If you've got any questions or comments about today's show, I want to hear from you. Shoot me an email and I promise you I'll get back with you. I'm Keith Warren. I'd like to thank you for watching a special edition of Deer and Wildlife Stories.